Good morning. I actually started this video before and it just stopped. I don't know why it did. I don't know the reason. I'm not that electronically savvy. Daisy's in the background eating her bone. We just went on a walk um, around the Tempe market. So it's a, it's a huge loop. It's like 4,000 steps. So I don't know how many miles that is. Probably one or whatever. Anyway, um, getting ready to start the day. I have, uh, I have to work tonight. So basically that, that routine looks like, you know, reading the Bible, doing my little Spanish app on my phone, my little tutorial. Um, I'll do some reading, I do some laundry, make sure that everything's caught up, boil some eggs for salads and stuff like that. Get, you know, meals ready for the week. Um, it's only a two day week. I'm actually working in six days, I'm working five twelves with one day off, which is hideous. If anyone does twelves, they know that's ridiculous. You start losing your train of thought by shift three. Um, anyway, I've put in my three weeks notice, which I think I already said in a earlier video, and I feel really good about that. That means I'll leave literally at the end of the contract, the first one that I signed, and I just won't do the extension that I signed up for. And um, I'm so happy about that. And lately I've been looking online. Um, there's so many videos out there of nurses that are just like, I'm quitting nursing and this is why. There's just tons of them out there. And I watched some in the past day or two just I just felt like it. I was curious if they were on the same page as I was, like same issues. And they were, it's, you know, younger nurses They're None of them are like 50 or 60 years old that are saying this. It's the young one, but they're like, you know, the hours are too long. There's no lunch break. They're giving us too many patients. We can't give good care. Um, the medical system is broken where they come in we treat with pills and IV drugs to get them back to uh, having less symptoms. And then they go back to their crappy way of life. And then they're going to be back in a month or six months later when their body cannot control and contain the way in which they're living. And then we'll get all this symptoms down again so that they can go home and be an idiot again. And I tell you what, it's hard on your soul to deal with that kind of patient and then you just throw in the mix your drug addicts that don't give two craps treat you like crap and all they want is drugs and they get mad when you don't give them what they want and you know they're going back on the street in two days and they're going to start their drugs over again or their alcohol there's no contrition of the poor behavior uh, there's no repentance of the poor lifestyles they're leading and then they're mad at you when we have to deal with their with the outcome of that and, um, you know, the long hours, no breaks, the uh, poor behavior of the patients and the broken system in general in the medical field where we're treating symptoms instead of, you know, preventative and, yeah. So there's like all of those reasons that we're, and, and you know, also that you're expendable. You know, in a lot of jobs, you're important. You know, if you're an engineer or you're self-employed, you're important and you're valued. Whether it isn't, if it's even just you that values you, you're valued. And in nursing right now, you're not valued at all. You're a number. You know, once a, once a year we get a week where they give us containers of Purell, like we want that. Or uh, donuts and pizza, like that's all we want is donuts and pizza. That's all they order for us. Thank you for all your hard work. And they will fire us in a New York minute. A big hospital does not care. Um, there, it's slow progression to get raises, and um, you know, there's no room for growth at all in floor nursing. It's just floor nursing. If you want a job, that means you have to quit your job at this hospital, go to another one. They pay you better, and then you can barter when you come back to this old hospital and say, "Well, this hospital paid me three more dollars an hour." I want a raise for 50 cents on that, and they will honor that, but they won't give you a raise if you stay with the hospital. So there's a general disrespect of nurses across the board. Hospitals do not give a crap. Um, doctors don't give a crap. Patients don't give a crap. 
And um, unless you're traveling, the money's not good. It's okay. So people are just leaving mass exodus. And they're, you know, I'd shared on, on my little YouTube channel how I changed my attitude of why I'm in nursing. And it's made all the difference. And it's true. I could really watch those. I know a year ago, if I were to watch those videos, being in the in the place, I, well, a year and a half ago when I wasn't in traveling, I would have been like, dude, this only confirms that I'm on the right path. I have to get out of nursing now. Like, my emotions would have been, I was already teetering anyway. They'd have been swayed and I would have given up nursing altogether. And that whole process of doing nursing because you're called to it, because it's as a mission, I remember as a missionary, you know, when I come back and I would talk at a church or whatever, they'd be like, oh, you're amazing. You're a missionary. How wonderful. Giving your life away to God. Blah, blah, blah. And that was great. <laughs> but like, they, it was a bit of a thankless, thankless job normally because you get up, you make breakfast for a hundred people that sometimes complain about what you're, what you're giving them and the food that you're making is donated. So it's crap to start with. And you work really hard and you have no paycheck really. So there's no money, monetarial, monetarial. I'm saying that wrong, I'm sure. But um, so yeah, there's, it was a little thankless and that's kind of where I'm at now. It's, it's thankless. And um, anyway, it just was confirming me to me that, yeah, I mean, it's all true. It's, it's awful. It's an awful profession, but like, if you're called to it, then you're called to it. And right now, I don't know about tomorrow, but right now I'm called to it. So it helps with that attitude. I got an email, hi Jody, from a friend of mine. And she just encouraged me so much as I'm out here doing the dang thing. And she's just like, you know, I'm praying for you. And I'm just happy for you. And hope you're doing well. And I see your service. And God sees it, and it just was so blessed. It's such a blessing to hear that because it's it's thankless. Um, but anyway, that's what we're doing today. I'm really excited about the prospect of going back to the Midwest and talking, hugging, loving, and kissing on some people that I love, and uh, just being able to fellowship with Christians and you know that kind of thing. So. Um, that's about it, really. Just getting excited about being done with this contract. I'm like eight shifts. I always do that. Eight shifts in a, in a wake up and I'm done. <laughs> I remember the army we used to do that in the army. If we had training, we'd be like seven days in a wake up. And I remember we got to basic training and we were like, we can do this. All it is, is nine weeks in a wake up. And the problem is, is in the army, they don't tell you, but the first day you get to basic training is day zero. So it doesn't count. <laughs> So you're like, oh, we can do it. You're huddled in a corner with your other <laughs> people that are trying to be soldiers. They're like, we can do this. It's just nine weeks and a wake up. <laughs> and then they get you together and the drill sergeants are like, by the way, we keep hearing you whisper nine weeks and a wake up. Well, this is day zero, baby. And we're going to burn you to the ground. And they do. They... <laughs> and I saw grown men just crying and laying in a puddle of sweat and vomit from being just worked until their body gave out. And uh, so I'm aware that sometimes that wake up can be further away than you think. So I have eight shifts in a wake up and I know sometimes that wake up can can old, hold its own issues. So uh, I am not disillusioned, but I am counting down definitely. And uh, so, yeah, and I'm just enjoying where I'm at. It's really beautiful. And I'm just taking advantage of Tempe, Arizona, as much as I can. I'm going to break down. I had memory foam and this cushion and everything else. I'm going to break down and buy a stupid mattress today. I hate when I know it's a purchase that's just going to be something that I'm not going to use. It makes me mad, really. But I'm just going to buy a twin mattress, put it on the floor. <laughs> Because what I'm doing, it's okay. It actually feels comfortable. But I'm waking up and my hip hurts. And um, I need that hip to work. So that's kind of where we're at with that. Um, I was reading 1 Corinthians this morning. 1 Corinthians 7 just blows my mind away. Like talking about married people and single people. And um, basically just breaking it down for us about, you know, if you're single... Man, just go for it. 
because hardship comes with marriage and it really does. I was just talking to a loved one this morning that's married and they were like, and this is wrong and that person's doing that and they don't care that I do this and this and this. And I'm like, oh my gosh, that is a lot of, I have a hard time enough with my own <laughs> drama in the morning <laughs> and my dog, let alone adding another person to it and hoping, hoping that they are being the partner that they should be and um, bearing half the load and all of that. I just, um, I'm not saying, you know, I'm a man hater, but it really kind of looks good from this end of things this morning. <laughs> it's like, I heard, I also talked to uh, a friend of mine yesterday and they were talking about their friend that was, you know, basically seeing somebody, but they didn't want to get stickily involved in, you know, marriage and, you know, ooh, I don't want to take care of their baggage. So I'll just date them instead for a couple of years. And I was just like thinking about that. And I remember being uh, dragged along by an individual and I knew that I was being dragged along. I knew they had no future for me at all. They just wanted to basically use me for the time being <laughs> and like be around me and, you know, and I remember how that felt. And I just remember, I just reading Corinthians this morning. I'm like, man, don't pursue anything of this world. God always brings along what he wants to. And I was even thinking, not even relationship wise, but like thinking about the house that I'm about to buy my little Airstream and just going, it says, don't basically don't get invested in anything that you can buy on this side of heaven. Like that's not what the world's about. This is not why you're here, you know? buy it don't buy it whatever but let that not be the focus of your mind is the things that can be bought and sold here on this stupid planet like this planet not stupid but um just thinking about that like being super focused on i gotta get married or super focused on i gotta buy this thing or i've gotta have two million in the bank for retirement those are all good goals but they should not be what drives us and man, it was just refreshing. I encourage everyone, read 1 Corinthians 7. Like sit down and really pull it apart. It's amazing. It was really water to my soul this morning. It was so good. Um, anyway, I'm going to probably sit here and do some journaling. I'm going to uh, write a little bit on a book, on a book that I'm never going to publish. It's about single life, Christian single life. But I definitely have stuff that I want to just pour into that this morning. I can't imagine anyone wanting to buy my book because it's so jam-packed of reality. It's it's not full of like hearts and flowers and hope for the future. It's like in the trenches and this is how it really is. And these are the positives and the negatives. And so I often put my thoughts in that book. And it's I wouldn't say it's hundreds of pages long, but I've been working on it for a long time. And um, it's a it's more of a godly perspective of being single instead of you know, a how to, you know, prepare yourself for marriage and how to live successfully and all of this as a single person. It's not that it's, it's how to function as an individual and be okay with it and be grateful for what you have. Um, and the downsides and how to navigate that in life. Cause there are definitely, you know, this world's paired up and everything is basically, um, set around that notion that everyone's paired up so how to navigate that so i don't know maybe someday somebody would like to read it that's in the depths of despair and don't know how to deal with being single but for me it's really therapeutic to type along a little chapter here and there about whatever's on my mind about being single and uh so anyway that's my week um i have to work too and then i'm off for four and i'm really excited about that i'll probably head out somewhere beautiful I've heard Sedona is amazing, um, and I haven't gone there yet, so I will probably head out to, to Sedona. It's only about two hours away. And if not there, if I feel really rambunctious, I might go out to Vegas and do some hiking. I have no idea. But they say that the road trip there, it's like six hours, and it's absolutely hellacious. It's like, you might as well, it's, not, it's mind-numbing. There's no scenery. It's just flat and ugly. So, I don't know. Sedona sounded pretty good. Um, Y'all have a good day. Have a good week. I'll talk to you later. Bye.